My guest on the program this week is simply amazing. You can describe him as a gladiator, but more to it, he's had a handshake with 28 presidents from all over the world. John Fashanu, a renowned footballer, was born on the 18th of September, 1962, in Kessington, London to a Nigerian father from Ogun State and a Guyanese mother. He attended Norfolk Primary School, England from 1966 to 1970, where he got his first school leaving certificate at Attenborough High School, England from 1971 to 1975. John Fashanu, popularly known as Big Fash, made his first team debut at the age of 17, becoming one of the youngest players to do so. In 1984, he was transferred to Millwall for 55,000 euros, after which he was transferred to Wimbledon in 1986 for 125,000 euros, making him the most expensive player of his time. In 1988, John Fashanu and the Crazy Gang won the FA Cup at Wimbledon. He was voted the Wimbledon Best Player of the Year, 1990 to 1991 as the top goal scorer with over a hundred goals for consecutive seasons with 20 league goals. John retired in the year 1995 due to a knee injury he sustained in a game with Manchester United. Following his retirement from the game, he became a television presenter and co-hosted the popular UK edition of Gladiators alongside Orica Johnson in the 1990s. In 1998, John was appointed a sport and tourist ambassador for Nigeria, and in 2003, John became the chairman of the Nigeria Football Association NFA Pro League Management Committee. In 2003, he came second in the second series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. He was also one of the founding members of Europe's largest black musical awards, the MOBO. John Fashanu has been married twice before, but is now single. His first daughter, Amal Fashanu, is a successful model and television personality based in Spain. Welcome to the program, John. Thank you, Manny. Great to see you. John, you've lived a good life, haven't you? Well, man, I've been very, very lucky. Yeah, but you know, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't that smooth from the beginning, was no, it? It was not. Smooth. Your early childhood was uh, a little bit of uh, was was it something you you like to recall? You know, um, Manny. I mean, where there's success, there must be failure. Yeah, Manny. Manny you know, I came from a broken home, as most people know now. Myself and my elder brother, we were fostered from England and we were living in a, almost like a hotel, like a, a room with 300 white young boys for two years before we were actually fostered by a white lady and a white husband who took us to a rural area in England, Manny, called Norwich. Norwich, yeah. And we lived there as the only two black children. Let's talk about your parents, your biological yeah. parents. I mean, they split up. Did you ever get to, you know, uh, make contact with any one of them? Well, Manny, you know, um, my mother was a nurse. She was from Guyana. My father was a, 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 a Yoruba man from Abiyokuta, uh, Ogun State. He decided to recognize me when I hit fame. Mm. What about your mum? You know, okay. what happened? Did you ever make contact with your mum at oh, that stage? Mum was lovely. I mean, it's normally the way that when you're abandoned or you're given out, it's normally the mother who gets the rough end of the stick. So my mother brought us up in London. She had five children. She could not look after five children. She was a, a nurse, a nurse having a very small salary. And there she has five children. So she had to give us to an organization called Bernardo's. Bernardo's, yeah. So my mother couldn't cope at all with the situation. And let's be honest, Manny, at the time, my father already had two wives. 
eventually growing up got into football, uh, you know, and started playing professional football. You started with Norwich, didn't you? Oh, yes. How, how did you Norwich. get in there? I mean, your, your brother was also playing for Norwich. Yeah, he was a star at Norwich. So, you know, whether I like it or not, that opened the doors for me to get in. Apparently, he was the first black person um, to get a one million pound transfer. He was the first black man ever. To, and he became the first one million pound player. That's a lot of money, especially mm. then money. Yeah, but where did it all go wrong for Justin? Where did it go wrong? You know, Manny, you know the story. It's an emotional story. It's, an, it's, a, it's a crazy, it's, it's, a, it's a movie. You know, Justin wanted to come out and uh, uh, that's his name, Justin, wanted to come out and he wanted to tell the world at that particular point that he was gay. For those of you who are watching, homosexual. That meant that he was swimming in the sea the wrong way mm. because we all had moved against him. But did he give you any hint of this? I mean, you were the closest person to him at that time. Manny? When did he start feeling, you know? didn't know a thing. Had I known he was, I would have taken his girlfriend a lot earlier. I'm telling <laughs> you that, Manny. <laughs> Let me be clear. But no, seriously, I didn't know at all. And I still don't believe he really was, but he was doing it because he wanted attention. What people say sometimes, you know, is uh, maybe it was your relationship that led him into committing suicide. Is that true? Well, many, you know, we're Christians, even if you're Muslims. One thing, there are some no-nos you don't go through. One is homosexuality. It's a no-no. One is committing suicide. How did you feel when you heard about um, his, actually, his death? Devastated. No matter who your brother is, no matter what... Was his behavior leading to all of that? His behavior, I would say, at that particular point in time, was suicidal. I think that uh, the routes, the doors that he walked through were crazy.